Hey guys, this is Magic. I don't know if you've ever met him. But, um, not feeling too good today, so I thought I'd give my research speech over the computer. And, um, I'm gonna be doing it on invisible disabilities. Um, mainly because. Uh, I'm trying to understand my girlfriend a little better, you know, with her um, anxiety problems. So I did a little bit of research, and I thought it would help me. Um, it's called The Age of Stigma. There are many conceptions when it comes to people with invisible disabilities. Examples of invisible disabilities are social anxiety disorder, panic dis disorder, depression, and obsessive compulsive disorder. Those who struggle with these disorders are not only challenged by their symptoms, but the stigmas that follow. The dictionary defines stigma as a mark of disgrace or infamy, a stain or reproach as on one's reputation, as well as a mental or physical mark that is characteristic of a defect or disease. Consider how you as an individual persevere people with physical disabilities compared to those with invisible disabilities. People with invisible disabilities are more likely to have negative connotations directed at them whereas someone with a physical disability seems to gain respect from others. Those who suffer from neurological disabilities or challenges are often accused of imagining their disabilities. However, when someone is diagnosed with a hidden disability and they make it known, it can negatively affect them when applying for jobs, etc. <laughs> Social media plays a role in our society that can impact the way someone is perce perceived. We as a community have created this idea of a norm for our population by comparing ourselves to others. This comes into play in everything in our lives. The ideal way to look the normal way to talk and dress, etc. On page 6 of Constructive Normalcy, which is a book I read by Leonard J. David, he said that with the concept of the norm comes the concept of deviations or extremes. When we think of bodies in a society where the concept of the norm is operative, then people with disabilities will be thought as of deviance. This, as we have seen, is in contrast to societies with the concept of an ideal in which all people have a non-ideal status. Depending on the characteristic, characteristics which we possess, we are categorized in different ways. Having an invisible disability is not considered the norm or a dominant trait. As a human race, we compare ourselves to people every second of the day. By comparing, we differentiate ourselves from others and create categories of stigmatized people. If there wasn't such a big emphasis on being better than one another and putting people down in order to make ourselves feel better, the idea of stigmatization wouldn't exist. The way movies and novels portray someone with a dis disability brings the prejudice of society towards people with disabilities. Leonard J. David pointed this out when he said, It is unusual for a main character to be a person with disabilities. Although minor characters like Tiny Tim can be deformed in ways that arouse pity, more often than not you're going to see characters with disabilities and popular forms of entertainment, and when you do, they will be marked with ideological meaning. For example, in the very famous movie The Rain Man, the character plays an autistic man with an amazing memory that leads him to win big money while counting cards in Las Vegas. One of my favorite movies. As you know, autism is a mental condition, though, so it makes it hard to form relationships with people as well as difficult to communicate and understand abstract concepts. The stigma that weighs on people's effect everything and everyone around them. In the connection of this, Larita Coleman Brown said social rejection or avoidance affects not only the stigmatized individual, but everyone who is socially involved, such as family, friends, and relatives. The permanent form of a social quarantine forces people to limit their relationships 
to other stigmatized people and to others for whom the social bond overweighs the stigma, such as family members. There seems to be a form to, of comfort in having relationships with people that struggle with the same issue as you. This is because it's easy to relate and understand one another, as well as because those might be the only people willing to accept you. Although one in five, although one in every five Americans suffer from mental illness every year, the stigma is still there because comparisons are made and people are reassured by the fact that there is someone else who is worse off the dilemma of difference, therefore affects both stigmatized and non-stigmatized people. Stigma allows some of the population to feel superior, while the others feel inferior. Which is the reason there is such a divide between those with and without disabilities, as well as such a divide between invisible disabilities versus visible disabilities. There are many stereotypes and prejudices about people who have a mental illness. The stigma that comes along with having an illness like social anxiety disorder can really impact a person in negative ways. It causes people to be insecure and anxious because reaching out for help from others when there are negative connotations tied in with invisible disorders causes this. There are so many misconceptions about people with mental illness like social anxiety disorder that people have been uniformed about. <coughs> When so many people have been misinformed about a subject, the only way that it can change is if they get better educated on it. A common misconception about people with social anxiety disorder, also known as social phobia, is that they have a hard time leaving the house and communicating with people in person. This would be considered a public stigma, which Kerrigan and Watson in the book described. Understanding the impact of stigma on people with mental illness. To be understood in these terms, components... Oh, to be understood in terms of three. Components, stereotypes, prejudice, and discrimination. The way that media analyzes people with mental illness in movies, books, etc. are identified in three ways. Kurgan and Watson said that these reoccurring themes were people with mental illness and homicidal maniacs who need to be feared. They have childlike perceptions of the world that should be marveled, or they are responsible for their illness because they have weak character. Kurgan and Watson point to the media and blame the way they have identified and generalized people with mental illness into three types of to be the cause of the stigma of those with mental illness. According to Kerrigan and Watson, this is why our society also seems to persevere or to perceive those with mental disabilities as being in control and responsible for causing them. Whereas when it comes to physical disabilities, those individuals tend to receive more pity. In the article I read, it said, the behavioral impact or discrimination that results from public stigma may take four forms. Withholding help, avoidance, corrective treatment, and segregated institutions. The public's way of treating those who struggle with a mental illness versus physical disabilities is avoidable if, the, if society was more informed on the topic. Individuals with a mental illness may experience low self-esteem, anger, or indifference about their situation and the public stigma that comes along with it. Those who do feel obligated by others because of their invisible disability develop self-esteem issues. Public stigma is the uh, attitudes and beliefs of the general public towards a person or their family members with a mental disability when someone is aware and agrees with the stereotypes that describe their stigmatized group that is called self-stigma. Self-stigma will cause your self-esteem to suffer as well as confidence. Doing this research speech has helped me personally. I figured out a lot of stuff, learned a lot of things that I never knew now. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Sorry I couldn't do it over at class. I'm not feeling too good. But uh, at least you got to see Magic now too. Come here, Magic. Come here.
I'm say hi. Say hi to my class. Say hi, boy.